Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of 7 level cascaded H-bridge multi-level inverter using SPWM technique in MATLAB Simlink. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you'll be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started. So this is the MATLAB model of 7 level cascaded H-bridge multi-level inverter using SPWM technique. Previously, I've done two videos with respect to 5 level cascaded H-bridge multi-level inverter using the conventional method based on switching sequence as well as using SPWM technique. In case you haven't watched that video, please do watch it. It will be available in the end screen as well as the link will be provided in the description. However, I'll be starting this video from the scratch explaining you how to simulate them. However, if you want the working, please do let me know in the comment section. I'll be doing a separate video on that as well. So one of the most commonly involved confusion is to how to enter the parameters in repeating sequence. First place, why do we need repeating sequence? Because it is used as a triangular signal. You can uh, conveniently give the values based on the uh, type of waveform that you want since we want a triangular wave I'll be entering the values in this particular fashion it will start from 0 if you carefully observe the signal it starts from 0 goes to 0.5 goes to 1 so it's basically the time axis x-axis is with respect to time converting in milliseconds by dividing it by 1000 consequently the output values starts from 0 goes to 1 comes back to 0 so we'll be getting a triangular waveform we are assuming the maximum value to be equal to 1 minimum value to be equal to 0 this way we'll be comparing the signal with a sinusoidal waveform in order to achieve SPWM technique. I hope this entering parameters with respect to se repeating sequence is understood. Once you understand this, trust me, the entire video will be very simple. You will definitely be able to simulate this circuit once you watch this video. Let's go to MATLAB and start up. Here we are in MATLAB. Click on Simulink Library Browser and we'll be searching for the components that we want. That is one of the greatest features that MATLAB has provided for us. So search for PowerView and add this block. This is basically uh, uh, the compiler for the simulation to take place and secondly it converts uh, the samples with respect to discrete or continuous domain that we want so we also need a voltage measurement block add that as well so once these two are added we will be requiring a dc voltage source which is basically our supply and search for it use the ones that are there in black the ones that are there in blue are used for signals and systems digital signal processing and operational amplifiers application the ones that are there in blue uh, ones that are there in black are used for power systems and power electronic applications nevertheless we can still use blue ones for power electronic application however we don't need a power give block over there but popularly this are used so that is why we are going on this we also need a mosfet switch so we'll be searching for mosfet and scroll a little down choose this mosfet the ones that are there in black secondly we're not using a thyristor because we need an external commutation circuit to turn them off how we can use an igbt as well so it totally depends on your requirement once that is done i'll be requiring a series rlc branch so search for series rlc and add this block as well once this is added, we will be requiring a scope in order to see the waveform. So search for scope and add this block as well. Uh, once all of these are added, let's look into the aspects with respect to SPWM technique. What are the blocks that we want? We need a sine wave, isn't it? So search for sine wave and add sine wave. Don't add sine wave function because it's not a function that we want. We want a signal. So add this block. So be very careful. If you add this one, you'll definitely not be getting the output. Once this is also added, we will be requiring a repeating sequence which was explained in the slide. So search for repeating sequence and add that block as well. Once the repeating sequence block is also added, we'll be requiring a relational operator. So search for relational operator and add that block. We also need a logical operator, uh, which is basically a NOT gate. I'll tell you the reason why we want that. Before that, we'll be using an AND gate and convert this to OR gate. So add AND gate first. We can later convert it based on our requirement. We need a gain block. So search for gain. I'll explain the purpose of requiring a gain block as well. So add this block for now. So once we have added all these blocks, let me place them in respective positions so that it is very convenient for us to start the simulation process. So the repeating sequence and sine wave has to be compared over here. The scope should be in the output terminals and switch in this particular position. The voltage should be measured at the load, power give block right at the top. So first place rotate this, ensure that the source in the downward direction and disable the measurement port. We are not using it. Even if you don't disable, nothing happens. But just to avoid confusions with respect to the circuit because circuit complexity will increase. So copy paste this four times and uh, we'll be having it in a form of a bridge. And once this is done, let us start off. Let us provide some sufficient distance so that we have to be very careful while connecting this. If you go wrong with 
even a single portion you will not be getting the exact output so connect drain to source in this particular fashion source to source drain to drain at this point and i'll be giving the dc supply between these two points so once this is done let us copy paste this entire block so place this in the downward direction in this particular fashion so once this is also done let us place this right at the top over here and let us copy paste another block in this particular fashion so we have three bridges so we have to cascade them so how do we do that first let us choose the resistor load and let us choose its value to be equal to 100 click on ok let us rotate it by pressing ctrl r let us connect it between this point and scroll down and this point once this is done we have to connect these blocks in series how do we do that connect take a tapping from this point control and then click on the mouse at that position where you want to take the tapping for and connect it to this point once this is done again from this point we need to uh, connect it in series with respect to this next bridge connected to this point so we have connected the blocks in series the bridges in series for seven level inverter so for five level we only needed two bridges for seven level we need one more bridge for nine level you can go on with respect to the uh, sequence that you want the output for so i'll be measuring the voltage at this point and i'll be giving it to scope in this particular fashion i hope this concept is clear with respect to connecting this now a lot of people have confusions with respect to this i'll explain it clearly press the amplitude like give the amplitude as three let me choose the frequency as 314.15 the reason why it is 314.15 is because it is in radians per second we are choosing a supply frequency of 50 hertz 2 pi into f that is omega is equal to 2 pi into f will convert them into radians per second that is why you'll be getting 314.15 once that is done click on ok go to repeating sequence block double click on this as i mentioned earlier this should be 0.5 and this should be 1 and divided by 1000 i hope this concept is clear so enter the output values as well it should be 0 1 and comes back to 0 in this particular fashion click on ok once this is done i'll be comparing these two signals double click on this change it to not gate and click on ok and i'll be giving it to this point in this particular fashion so one important thing to remember all the bridges that are there three bridges that are there the first leg the switches two switches that are there in the first leg are always associated with the positive output voltage levels that is positive steps so we have to be very careful while connecting them so we will be connecting these two only the positive legs first for negative legs how do we connect it i'll tell you again so take the tapping not gate should be connected to the second switch always the pattern should be the same so be very careful while connecting it connect it a little slowly take your time because even a small mistake it will be very tough to again debug where we have gone wrong that is the reason why i'm stressing so much on this so connect this at this point so this leg is done now what we'll be doing is we will be copy pasting the entire thing again and i'll be dragging and dropping uh, such that it will be connected between the same two points over here in this particular fashion so we can connect this over here we can connect this over here so now what we will be doing is double click on the repeating sequence now we need next level of the output isn't it previously it is in 0 1 0 level now we want one level higher to it that means we'll be increasing all these values by one so enter two again enter one over here once this is done click on ok so i hope this concept is clear because at the first place repeating sequence we started from 0 1 0 again it, the next level we have to get and that is why we'll be incrementing the output values click on ok once this is done again i'll be copy pasting this and paste it in the downward direction for the next bridge over here in this particular fashion so we have connected it here so now again i'll be double clicking we need the next level again from the previous level this is only with respect to positive cycles that i'm talking about so it should be two again we need three so enter three again we need two so be very careful over here and once this is done the time will remain the same x-axis will remain the same isn't it so we're not changing that now one of the most important things to remember i'll be using a gain of minus one i'll be multiplying the signal with minus one which signal i'm going to multiply the sinusoidal signal why am i going to multiply it because sinusoidal contains both positive and negative but i want the negative cycle at the first place and it should be compared with the signal uh, repeating sequence block so that i'll be getting steps in the negative cycle as well now we have done with respect to positive but we need it for negative as well isn't it so i'll be connecting this 
minus 1 i'll be comparing these signals now use a relational operator again and copy paste a not kit again in this particular fashion so the sine wave was connected to the first relational operator so and the second one is connected to the repeating sequence over here connected to a not gate not gate should be given to the lower switch always with respect to the legs take the tapping from here connect it to the first switch of the second leg so again we will be repeating the same procedure so copy this copy the not gate and uh, we will be taking the tapping like from the negative minus one value over here so we'll be connecting it here repeating sequence will be the same we are comparing it with negative sinusoidal cycle connected to a not gate not gate given to the second switch of the second leg so connect take the tapping and give it to the topmost leg in this particular fashion once this is done control c control v will be requiring a relational operator will be requiring a not gate as well connect it in this particular fashion so what we will be doing we'll be again taking the first leg with respect to first leg we'll be taking it from this point again in this particular fashion so connect it to the uppermost part with respect to sinusoidal signal so once this is done positive again this this one with respect to the repeating sequence block connect it to the not gate not gate to the bottom most one take the tapping from this point and give it to this so this is how we'll be connecting the circuit i hope circuit connection is clear so once this is done let us set the simulation time to one second because the SST loads are basically static loads if you're using motor then we have to give 10 seconds at least because there will be transients as well i hope connecting the circuit is clear so so once uh, we have entered the value as one double click on the power cube block change it to discrete because uh, while the process of running this we need various levels and discretization will give us some sort of accurate output if you give it in continuous domain there are chances that you might miss some information during the process of the simulation so discrete samples each and every instant with respect to it will be discretized and that is why we'll be going for discrete so now click on run let us double check on the output uh, by double clicking on the scope so we will be uh, zooming the waveform by using this op uh, particular functionality and if you see here you are getting the exact output that you want so it starts from zero goes to another level goes to another level goes to another level comes back comes back comes back go to the goes to the negative uh, in the same way in which the positive cycle is there goes here and again these are the switching pattern you can ignore them so it totally depends on an accurate design but how are you getting the steps so this is how we have to get with respect to the output waveform so i hope the concept of simulating a seven uh, seven level multi-level inverter was clear and you were able to do it in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video meet you guys in another video thank you